Hi, welcome to Unnecessary Roughness, Barstool's college football show brought to you by the good folks at High Noon Hard Seltzer. Liam, let's tell them about, no, 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 let's let Casey tell them about High Noon Hard Seltzer. Casey, tell them about High Noon Hard Seltzer. Ev, you and I, like, we both live in the city. It's popping out there right now. The sun is shining. It was like a beautiful 75 degree day. I know in Chicago, it's been nice too, but I had my first like day high noon this past weekend outside with like a short sleeve shirt on. It was phenomenal. Like high noons always hit, but you know, when, when the sun comes out, the weather starts feeling good. Nothing better than a high noon. You just feel, you feel that wind blowing. Maybe, maybe you're letting the chest hair flow a little bit. <laughs> nice button like, down. Maybe you're at yesterday, you're at your best friend's uh, daughter's one-year-old birthday party. Yes. Cooler full of high noons. Hit that sun's coming down. Crack a high noon, maybe the new flavors, the new maybe the old flavors, whatever, whatever, whatever taste that you like. Yes. I think they've got it. They've got the vodka, they've got the tequila, the fiesta pack is the new tequila pack. Obviously, the the teas. I haven't gotten my hands on a tea yet, but I need that peach iced tea. Like I need air to breathe. So if you go to highnoonspirits.com, if you don't know where to find it, obviously they will tell you there, but liquor stores, convenience stores, wherever you get your high noon, go get it. The sun is shining everywhere. And Brandon. I had a high noon at my first WNBA game the other day. I went and saw Caitlin Clark play in person. Did you? I did. Well, see, that's a great place to have a high noon because there's not going to be any lines at the concession stands. There. Uh, let me tell you something. The Caitlin Clark effect is real. Barclays was sold out, like the entire place, not like all the way up. Like it looked like I was watching the Nets play, except the the girls. I think there's always... far less people for the Nets. Yeah, probably. Far yeah, less. that's probably true. There was more people to watch Caitlin Clark. And then also, like the Liberty, I guess they're pretty good. I don't know. I, I haven't been paying attention to the WNBA until this year, but it was fun well, and had a high noon there. First of all, Liberty are the second best team in the league. They lost in the finals last year. Uh, secondly, uh, take the next 20 minutes to tell me all about that WNBA game. <laughs> Fuck you. Well, unfortunately, we're almost out of time, so we're going to move on. Uh, good Lord. We're leading off a of WNBA. Well, I said I had a high noon there. It was off you're the, being, the high you're noon. You're being ridiculous. I just can't believe somebody is, is. Thank you very much. Almost. Who just brought you in that tea? Huh? What's happening right it looks now? Looks nice. Nice. In jacket. Chicago, in Chicago, we're all teammates. We bring each other tea and all that. Like each other. That was Paige. Hi, Paige. Oh, Thanks. I love Paige. Hi, Paige. You guys like each other? That sounds gay. <laughs> It is a big, big F you. It's so gay out here. <laughs> um, all right. College football podcast. We're going to talk about college football and yeah. we're going to, we're going to do so in several different ways. Now, obviously it's the off season. So you're kind of piecing together what to talk about. You know, occasionally you'll get a transfer here, transfer there, but nothing that's really just driving discussion all the way through this, this show right here. But I got three things that stood out. We're going to talk about the, in the college football 25, trailer that dropped the other day we'll talk about that in a minute um and then as we go forward looking forward to college football so much change has happened you have the 12 team playoff you have everything that's going on and you have new places and new faces new homes for teams you have cal and stanford and smu in the acc you have uh the the four from the pac-12 going to the big 10 you have the, what's left over from the pac-12 going to the big 12 the sec everybody knows where everybody's going but I think we need to break down a little bit more than we always have uh, what a conference season might look like. This isn't our official conference preview, but the reason I pulled this conference out today is it, when we go into the season, the headlines are going to be with the SEC welcoming Texas and Oklahoma. And then the headlines will be with the Big Ten welcoming USC, UCLA, Oregon, and Washington. Those are all huge programs. I'd like to talk about the Big 12 today when, we, when it comes up in a minute because – They've put together a nice little exciting conference. They don't have, they lost Texas and Oklahoma. Obviously, that was their draw for decades, but I think they did a real good job of putting together an intriguing football conference. And we're going to discuss that at length in a little bit. And then Dabo said some shit. And then Blutman has his uh, Blutman minute where he gets to talk about whatever he wants to talk about. What don't, what was that? Liam Blutman minute later. Let's get hyped. Let's get hyped. Get hyped. Ladies and gentlemen, let's all get hyped for the Liam Blutman minute. Later, though. Later. Hype. We'll save the hype. hype. Save hype. the hype for later. The Liam I'm, hype circle. But we're telling them, we're telling them in a we'll get hyped later. Do we need a Blutman minute countdown? No, that'd be ridiculous. That would be ridiculous. I'm sorry. I want to talk about college football, Brandon. Why are you hollering at me? Because I want to talk about college football. 
Okay. Did you, um, did you hear about how the Blutman Minute came about last week? No, but I'm 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 curious to hear. I'm he, curious to learn. He, he put together the rundown, and on there it said, "We all get a moment to talk about whatever we want." And Brandon pointed out it's just because Liam wanted to talk about whatever he wanted. Yeah. So now instead of doing that, we're just letting Blutman have his own minute. <laughs> yeah. So it sounds like he executed his plan perfectly. Yeah, it was per it was perfect. Yeah, he like Trojan horsed his way into getting his own segment. <laughs> But he, he he dressed it up like he was doing it for all of us. But he really just he just he just wanted his own spotlight, and he got he's got it. But anyway, that's like when you wear a nice outfit and you tell someone that's wearing a bland outfit theirs is nice, so they can just tell you yeah. yours is great. Perfect, worked like every her, time. Sp speaking of interesting outfit, Big F. <laughs> I mean, best shirt of this crew. It's no no fucking chance, buddy. I'm wearing a hacksaw Jim Duggan American flag shirt. Yeah, I mean it's yeah. If you I, think that, it, I think that Ed shirt is is much flashier than yours. If he lay down, he looked like the uh, the, uh, the carpet in a casino. <laughs> I mean, those are nice carpets. <laughs> that's a good shirt. Yeah, I got that. That's the kind of shirt. That's the kind of carpet casinos put in there to disorient us, so we so we stay in there and spend money all day. <laughs> I lose money constantly. Casinos. One of my I, one of my top hobbies, I'd say. Uh, now listen, I'm not one to shit on a shirt. I like a, a nice, exciting shirt, a good looking shirt, but you definitely just wanted me to say that. Anywho. Yeah. Thanks, Brandon. So you're welcome. welcome. Jesus Christ. Uh, what are, we are we almost finished? Anyway, fr Friday, Friday morning. I'll never forget where I was. I was, well, I was in this very seat talking on this very microphone at 10 AM central time, 11 Eastern EA sports dropped the trailer for college football 25. Now, for the last couple of weeks, they had been dropping little breadcrumbs. They dropped little hints. They dropped little things. Um, they, here's a here's a cover that's not really the cover, but it's kind of the cover. Here's the real cover, and here's not. Here's a screenshot of Notre Dame guys doing this. And Friday, there had been certain people worrying. Oh my God, I, I, they haven't given us any gameplay. They haven't given us anything to to hold on to. So is this real? Is this real? Finally, Friday, we got our first glimpse of the game. And Casey, I know that you don't have a history of playing this game. And Big Ev, I don't think you have a history of playing this game. Uh, you'd be incorrect. Oh, I, I'm incorrect. I always thought you said you didn't play it much. I'm sorry. I apologize. I didn't much video games in general, but played quite a little bit in early college, which was like the last year or two of the game, unfortunately. Very, very good. Okay. So uh, I don't know your history with it. First video game I ever played that wasn't Pokemon. <laughs> Yeah, boy. Nostalgia, brother. First game on the console. So this is the most important video game of my entire life. Mm -hmm. They've gone 11 years without it. Casey, I've told you this story many, many times, but used to back in college, 2002, 2003, 2004, we would have to go to GameStop for a midnight release. Mm -hmm. And I would drive up there and I'd get there at like seven o'clock in the GameStop parking lot in Starkville, Mississippi. It'd just be me and the football team. And we'd be sitting there. There was a movie theater across the street. So we'd go to a movie, then come back. Everybody has some beer. And you just wait for GameStop to open. And as soon as they open, you take it home, you open it, and you play it for the next 28 months. You just play it forever. <laughs> uh, and it's just, it was a very formative. It's probably the video game I've played the most in my life, enjoyed the most in my life. It is just a perfect summation of college football. You get to dive in there. You can recruit. You can do all these things. It's just great. And I worry. Huh? It never gets old. It never gets old. And I worried, 11 years off, what's it going to look like? Casey, I, I saw. Are you crying? I saw that thing Friday. Did you see it? Oh, of course I saw it. Big Ev, did you see it? I saw it. What did you think, Big Ev? Um, I thought the trailer was a little horseshit is what I thought. Well, Brandon's I can't, I can't, good. I can't with this guy. I can't with this he's leaving. He's, he's again. This is this is where the visual oh, really no, comes no, in. But put, put your headphones back on, Brandon. You have a you have a fair gripe. A fair. No. Oh wait, 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 wait. Are we doing that bullshit, stupid <laughs> ass? Are we doing that? Are we doing that Ohio State bullshit? They, Brandon. No, they had us losing the Illabuck. They was, made it. He has a point. That was crazy. They had us losing the. Not only did they have a, a defender getting stiff armed. Through the center of the that earth, was fair. That was fair, which may or may not have happened. <laughs> There's fair. been a lot of games. Dive Edwards may or may not have done that once or twice the last couple of years, but they had us losing the Illinois football team 
hoisting the Illibuck in celebration after a win versus Ohio State. Go it's a personal, you know, there is a personal <laughs> vendetta with someone at EA Sports, a personal vendetta with someone who made this video game. Big Ev, anything can happen in college football. Yeah, it, show, it gives people playing this game like, whoa. Oh, I could be it Illinois would, and beat I, Ohio State? I could be. That's incredible. Also, that's that grows the game. That happened recently. It happened in 2007. So it okay. happens all the time. The, also, I will say this. They should have had script Ohio in there. The, yeah, have been there. Blotman, great point, Blotman. Great point. What? 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 I mean, that should have been like that. Okay. Been. All right. All right. Big Ev, let's the start over. Biggest fan base in college football, they showed two clips. One getting <laughs> stiff on, and the up. other losing a game that we literally beat the shit of every time we played them. All right, let's start over. <laughs> Big Ev, did you see it? <laughs> did you see it? Say yes or no. Unfortunately, yes. Okay. Um, feelings about Ohio State aside, what do you think about it? I mean, the tech, now, the tech looked good. Players look good. The general gameplay, I mean, seemed to look good. The it's realistic. Listen, we're in 2024. It's people are going to talk about. I'll take the hat off for a second. People are talking about like, oh, it's same as Madden, this and that. It was awesome. Also, the Welcome to the Jungle as the theme song was elite. Phenomenal. It was phenomenal. And it starts off. You you, you see Howard's Rock, and you're running down that. You see Boston College players rubbing the eagle. I think you see Florida State uh, throwing the spear. Notre Dame hitting and play like a champion today. The Iowa, the Kinnick wave was in there. Um, every, every, um, what's that? The Trojans. The Trojan stab at midfield. Like everything was there. Everything. That, the, here's the thing. When these whiners get on lines, oh, it looks like a Madden reskin. That tells me that you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Because what separates college football from, from pro football can't be summed up in a video game gameplay. It can't be summed up in a handoff. What separates it is the fucking play like a champion today and the script Ohio and the dotting the eye and the Kinnick wave and all that. That shit doesn't exist in pro football. It's about football and money up there. It's That's what it is. It's very, very simple. Here, it's passion and hatred and everything, everything that goes into the game. They spent the first minute of that trailer showing you everything that goes into the game, just the players running onto the field and how fucking special that feels. God damn it, it was awesome, Casey. Oh, no, it was awesome, and I, I, I don't know if you purposely did it or not, but, like, A&M being in that, like, gave me chills. Like, the, the 12th man and, like, the showing Kyle Field, and, like, it felt so – first of all, like, you're right, the tech looked incredible. Like, you could have told me that was a trailer for, like, just the upcoming games, like, actually being played on the field and be like, okay, I could see that. But I said this in the, the reaction video that I sent to Liam is – like, it makes me want to learn even more because I don't want to be left out. Like, I'm going to have FOMO if I don't play this game because of how awesome that looked and the fact that it comes out in July. So, like, that really dead period that, like, feels like it takes for fucking ever leading up to the season, now this game is like, like – I, I – don't know how fast it's going to take me to like love to play it. If it's, I don't know if it's hard to learn, but I have to learn now. I have to. Um, you know, I, I, it's impossible for me to know. I've been playing it since 1998. So, um, uh, probably I don't know how to learn it, but I, I would think it would be pretty easy. But just feeling it and, and looking at it and the recruiting and everything. Um, I do have some questions, Liam, that they, have, they haven't really addressed yet. Like, Am I just going to be able to offer somebody five hundred thousand dollars to come to my school now? I'd love to know how. Uh, we don't know how that's going to work. And IL would love to see their like features for the transfer portal. Yeah, is the portal just going to be wide open? Offering, texting a really good receiver at, like Texas Tech, like yo, you come play at uh, Akron. You're trying. To, you're trying to tamper. Yeah, you have to. That's part of the game. Always been part of the game. Just a little more popular now amongst the national scene. So why not? I can't wait. Uh, yeah, it's going to be awesome. July 19th, uh, I can't wait. Um, my team wasn't in the game, uh, wasn't in the trailer either, Big F. Does that make you feel better? Fuck no. <laughs> no. No. I would have rather not been in it. Mine was in the trailer. UCLA? DJ Harden scored a touchdown. Did in he? Rose Bowl. No biggie, yep. Wyoming was in there big. On Hoyland, kicker, Barstool Sports, Arizona Bowl MVP. What? What do you John say? John Hoyland. John Hoyland was in there. The kicker from Wyoming. Okay, don't holler at me. Good kicker. Yeah. The yips last year. We gotta get over those in the upcoming season. But he could boot from fifty plus. Well, they're at elevation out there. Mm -hmm. What's their elevation? Mm -hmm. Seven thousand. Not numbers guy. Seven thousand two hundred and. 
I don't know. It's it's written all Probably over. Probably better everything. than Denver. It is higher than Denver. It's the highest elevation stadium in the country. Take that, Denver. I've been out. What are you doing? What are you? Denver both? prides themselves on their elevation, fifty-two. Yeah, eight, but I'm, oh, Wyoming's higher. I've I, driven I, from I'm Denver. Tell, I'm saying Denver makes themselves like the elevation out to do capital. Of the I've driven from world from from I Denver just, to Laramie multiple times. Beautiful drive, beautiful drive, stunning. Fist even. Bump. Okay, I said we need a fist bump counter. We got to work on that. We're sitting in a room that's eighty-five degrees. It's so, it's so hot. We are too. too. It's fucking miserably it's scorching high. in here I, I i how how pete overmeyer still has a job fuck you pete you're a fucking idiot this motherfucker just gets to gets to suck at his fucking job and, and and cash checks all the way to the bank if any of us suck like we'd be i'd be back in mississippi selling fucking insurance or something god <laughs> damn it pete you suck we're six months in there and we don't have a fucking working air conditioner I'm this, we've been in this building for like four years and there's not a working air condition. And the guy in charge of it just doesn't do a goddamn thing about it. <laughs> Motherfucker. I don't even have a key to get in the front door here. That's fine. <laughs> um. All right. So yeah. any, any other thoughts on that game? Did you have any thoughts on that game? Just seeing player names in a trailer. Seeing player names is great. Uh, I guess the actual cover has come out since. Did the actual cover come out since we last did it? I think it yeah. did. Yes. Yeah. So the cover is uh, Travis Hunter, Quinn Ewers, and Donovan Edwards. Thank you, Donovan Edwards. Uh, which a lot of people made a stink about that. They were like, "Why is Donovan Edwards on there?" Well, I mean, he is the most visible player for the defending national champs. I have no problem with that. And also, like in in the biggest games of their season, he went off. Like in the national championship and sorry, against Ohio State. Like in the most visible games that Michigan played, he was the superstar. Well, they only played two. Um, but yeah, he was, uh, he was very, 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 very good. All right. Uh, before we get to big 12, you got anything to tell me, Casey? I do. You know what? I know you probably need to do right now is check your rocket money account because every time, every week that you check it, you realize that maybe you're spending mm -hmm. a little bit too much money, but that's what rocket money does. It's a fantastic app. As I've said a million times, I'll say it again. I've been using it for a lot longer than they have been sponsored on this podcast because not only can it show you what you're spending money on your budget, it helps you cancel unwanted subscriptions. Again, if you're listening to this for the first time or the 10th time, you have probably signed up for something that you forgot that you're paying for. Rocket Money will not only show you all of them in one place, they will also cancel them for you, which is huge. You just press a button, give them a little information, and they do all the hard work for you. I love Rocket Money for so many different reasons. Mostly, it's a free app, which is great. So if you st want to stop wasting money, which who doesn't want to stop wasting money, Ev? Wasting money stinks. It's the worst. It's the worst. So stop wasting money on things that you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash rough. Again, that's rocketmoney.com slash rough. Rocketmoney.com slash rough. Brandon, did you check the account? Are you happier this week than last week? I'm doing okay. okay. Things, are, things are all right. Okay. Yeah. I don't remember if it was, it was, I guess it was two weeks ago. It was like three days into the month and you did not like what Rocket Money showed you. But thank God that it showed you because then you were able to yep. save some money. Yep. Um. All right, y'all ready? Let's ready. talk. Let's talk a little Big Twelve football. Um, if I told you ten years ago, if I told you five years ago, hell, if I told you three years ago at this point that the Big Twelve was going to lose Texas and Oklahoma, that would sound like a doomsday scenario that they would never, ever, ever be able to recover from. I mean, I don't know the actual number, but since the Big Twelve started back in ninety two. 92, 93, 94, 95, somewhere in there. I would say Nebraska won four or five at the start, but after that, 90% of the titles went to Texas and Oklahoma, it feels like anyway. I know Oklahoma State's won a couple. Um, but losing Texas and Oklahoma, they were the bell cows. They were The conference was built around them. It was literally built around them, and they're gone. And I would think, my God, the Big 12 is going to be lucky to put together anything. But I look at this conference this year from a football perspective, do you have an Oklahoma or Texas who's going to be in eight primetime games, who's going to be a huge numbers draw? Probably not. Mm -mm. But what you have, you do have a big primetime draw. But what you have are 12 teams that's going to be an exciting conference race. You got even teams in there, and you got teams, I think, that could break through and make this one of the more exciting conference races to follow all season. I look at it, and obviously, in the short term, Texas and Oklahoma – will probably be replaced as a marquee game marquee team by the fact that Colorado is in this conference. I don't know that they'll I don't know if they'll be very good, 
I don't know if they'll win a lot of games, but I know they'll be on TV a lot, and I know they'll be in the spotlight, and that's Colorado this year. That's their marquee team for right now. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, you, you, I thought you had more to say. Yeah, there was a that was a really very weird, open-ended statement. Yeah, that was a very weird ending to your rant. Uh, conversations happen, right? I thought that's how conversations happen. Um, all right, I, I look at it. Listen, let's, let's let's break it down like this. Okay. okay. I think if you look at the Big Twelve, you have three teams and then a fourth who will probably be towards the bottom. All right. Houston, Cincinnati, they Arizona State. Anybody have any problem with this? Nope. I think those three, uh, Houston in the first year of Willie Fritz, uh, Cincinnati uh, is a little bit different there in the second year, but they just flat out hired a bad coach. When they hired Satterfield a couple years ago, I have no idea why they hired him, uh, and they're going to be at the bottom until they get rid of him. And then Arizona State in the second year of Kenny Dillingham. Um, then I would have one more team towards the bottom, and that's the Colorado Buffaloes. Thoughts? I, I disagree with that just because I think that, I mean, and I know every time, anytime I say anything positive about Colorado, people are like, oh, it's just because of Dion. But here's the thing. What their biggest problem was last year was they did not have the guys they needed in the trenches against a lot of teams that were obviously very good. Now, I, I actually had this conversation with Evan Rico before we started recording. The Big 12 itself is exciting because the teams are exciting. I think as a whole, it's like a shittier, way shittier conference obviously losing Texas and Oklahoma, but like, you can't tell me that there's two playoff teams in the big 12 for that reason. I think Colorado will be more successful because they went out they got a much better offensive line. They've obviously second year getting the program together and they're playing in a shittier conference than they were last year. I think they're playing in a, in a worse conference. I don't know that I would use the word shitty to describe the big 12. I do think the Pac-12 last year was better than the Big 12 this year, yes. Yeah, I think the teams are just going to kind of cannibalize themselves like they have years past in the Pac-12. I just think it's going to be pretty adjacent to that. Yeah, I don't think you're going to – I mean, there's no trip to Oregon here that was just waiting to devour them last year, right? Like, like that, like that was – Look at the Big 12 in you know, the 16 teams. Like, no, not one of those teams where I'd be like, oh, they have a chance to be a national title contender. I think Utah could. I uh, Utah's schedule is pretty dang favorable too. I know they go at Oklahoma State, but they play Arizona at home, and then the rest of the game should be pretty dang I, winnable. I mean, I feel like with a healthy Cam Rising, Utah is probably in that mix last year. Um, they just didn't have the quarterback to keep up with teams. Mm -hmm. um, but I, 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 you know, I think Utah, and then I think, I think Utah can be very, very good. I think Kansas State has a chance to be very, very good. And Kansas State could end up having the best quarterback in the conference. Avery Johnson's got a really bright future. He uses his legs too. Yeah, they let go. They let uh, they let the guy who's going to start at Ohio State go because they want to give this guy a shot. Correct decision. Avery should have started sooner last year. They got Keegan Johnson, who's a nice uh, receiver, and Dante Cephas coming in from Penn State after his time at Kent State. That's a big pickup. He could bounce back. Fist I knew it was coming. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, uh, but anyway, uh, so I was building from the bottom to the top. So Houston, since the Arizona State, I think, uh, in fairness, will be pretty bad this year. Colorado is worth a discussion. Then you have you have your BYUs, your Baylors, your UCFs, and your Texas Techs. And then the rest of them, I think, the rest of them, I think, could be in the mix to win the damn thing. Iowa State, I could see being good enough to win this conference. Iowa State, sneaky, sneaky good. How sneaky? They have a lot. I'm going to talk about one of their players later as a breakout candidate, but but like they've got some dudes on this team, even at receiver. Um, like Iowa State could be pretty solid. It, it, if Beck's good, is Beck going to be good? I don't know. I don't I'm know. asking you. I don't know either. We'll see what uh, Campbell could do. So if his quarterback's good, they're going to be good. That's yeah, pretty fair. They to have a lot of good like skill positions. Why are you hollering? Players? I'm well, not hollering. You were hollering a little bit. I wasn't hollering. Okay. Like Isaiah Alston transferred in from Army. That kid's just a freak athlete. I think Arizona has a chance to be very good. Obviously, they lost their coach. And some teams who have lost their coach um, kind of cratered and, and people left. And Arizona was able to hold on to Fafita. They were able to hold on to McMillan, the receiver. Um, I think they got a chance to be good. TCU, I don't know. TCU so all over the map. Well, what's your read on TCU? 
Uh, I don't think I'm going to be in on TCU. Um, I was actually going to talk about the running back later. I think he's pretty good. I don't. Th- so, are you actually going to talk about everybody later? No, I don't think TCU has enough difference makers, though, at skilled positions. I don't think they have enough like great players on defense. I just, and, and I don't think they have a good quarterback. Like, it's going to be Josh Hoover. Josh Hoover doesn't move the needle. I, I UCF has a better chance of winning the conference than TCU. Okay. So and I'm going to just finish this out real quick. Oklahoma State, who I believe is returning every player that's ever played at Oklahoma State. Yeah, seemingly so. I would love for Talon Shetron to finally get an opportunity to receive. I've been waiting for that for two years. Yeah, I've been waiting for Talon Shetron, too. Yeah, uh, West Virginia, Utah, and Kansas State. Now, and then Kansas, of course. Um, we can discuss this conference however you all want. But I guess, Casey, the reason I brought it up was um, the death knell of the Big 12 always seemed like when Can- when Texas and Oklahoma would leave. I think what's left in their wake is a conference that's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, no, I, it's definitely going to be an exciting race. And the Big 12 for the last few years has been, I mean, I like the Big 12 always has fun games. The issue until TCU like won a playoff game was once they got to the playoffs, the Big 12 usually looked like shit. Now, obviously, with the expanded playoff, it's going to be different. But to me, like, first of all, Texas and Oklahoma leaving – you would assume just as a brand, it's going to like get worse because you're losing two big time programs, but it's now anybody's conference because, you know, A&M left solely because of like the, not only, but like a lot of reason, the Longhorn network, the Longhorn network created a lot of problems within the conference. And a lot of people are like, Hey, you know, we don't have to be in the Longhorn shadow. Well, now both Texas and Oklahoma leaving. It's like, who is going to be the big name of this conference? And it's like, you look at somebody like Oklahoma state and Mike Gundy, who's been there for fucking ever, And you're like, could this now be their conference? Could they find, like, they don't have to worry about Oklahoma. They don't have to worry about Texas. And that to me is the most interesting thing is who's going to step up and become like the big 12s, like leading program. And how fast is that going to happen? And I, you're right about Colorado from like a branding standpoint, but like whose conference is this now? Well, let's discuss that. That's exactly right. Whose conference is this big F next five years, you can buy stock in one team and this is their conference. Who is it? I mean, this. I think the safe. I mean, the IBM or whatever. You want, the, I'm bad with stocks. Let me not reference that. I'm gonna, Apple. Say Apple. 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 Apple, Apple. There we go, Apple. I think. I mean, how can you not say Utah? I mean, you can set your watch to Utah. I understand, like they're not the sexiest, but I mean, winning him. I mean, the program he's built there. I mean, I just don't know how you could say anyone else but them, and feel like really good about it. You know, the defense is going to be good. You know, they're going to be well coached. Yeah. Really? You know, it's incredibly tough. To, I mean, going to Utah and winning is almost impossible. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the Brandon. That's the original like trickier tough conversation. Is what what 2019 that we had was Utah the, as tough as it gets. The thing about and we talked about this last week. I like one of my predictions of was I think that of the Power Four, 50 percent of the Power Four will be won by like a new team in the conference. And I brought up like potentially Texas in the SEC, Oregon in the Big Ten. But you look at the Big Twelve. I mean that. Like Utah winning the Big Twelve is a much safer bet. Yeah, I, I I would think so. But I I look at this list right, and I'm going five years down the road, and I'm not saying that Utah can't this can't be their conference. But I guess what I am saying is, as great as Utah has been, they have been great. Is there a natural cap on Utah's program that keeps them that one layer under your 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 Oklahomas, your Alabamas, your Georgias, it keeps them from maintaining that because they can they can go eleven and one, they can go ten and two, they can go eleven and one, they can go ten and two, but can they ever go thirteen and zero and, and win some playoff games? I think they can now. Okay. I think they're out of a conference that had USC, Oregon, and all these other and like Washington. There was a lot of competition that they had at the top in the Pac twelve. And they were out there in the Pac twelve South when that existed for a hot minute. And yeah. they were, and they they had taken down USC, and USC kind of ended up going down here because Utah kept Utah just kept winning, right? Like, why can't they do that here in a Big Twelve that doesn't have that same level of of star power with their top programs? Now? Well, they can. I'm just playing devil's advocate here. I'm just and trying to. Wayne Hans one of the top five coaches in college. I think he's. I think he's way way near the top. They're probably going to be able to recruit better now. So They've let's, already developed really well in years past with lesser recruiting, like not to a top tier recruiting standpoint, but yeah. like they they always develop their three stars. Well, let's just lay out the teams who could potentially uh, in five years could be the number the blue chip stock. Okay, I think Utah is certainly one that you got to talk about. Brandon, 
I have, I think I just had an old man yelling at a cloud moment. And maybe like, I don't know if this is just because like, I'm going to have to get used to it. Like when you ask that question to me, even though I think Utah could probably be the best team in the conference next year, like to say whose conference it is, like, I, like, I want to say a traditional big 12 team. Like I want to be yeah. able to say like, it's going to be Oklahoma state or well, let's go there. Let's go there. Cause Oklahoma state is the name that kind of pops up to me on that radar uh, of being somebody, listen, do you know the answer to this question? Mike Gundy's been there 19 years. Do you know how many times he's won more than nine games? Nine or more games? 18? Well, no, much less. Ten times. Oh. But still, that's, that's – <laughs> I thought you – okay. That's a, that's a, he's, he's got ten nine-win seasons under his belt. I think yeah. he's got five or six ten-win seasons under his belt. Like, he has won in the shadow of Oklahoma and Texas. That shadow is now gone. He now no longer shares a state with another team in, in his own conference. Um, you got to think – if Oklahoma uses their their money and their ability in the SEC to recruit even more nationally than they already do, and that's hard, but if they go even more national than they already do, that Oklahoma State maybe gets a little bit of a bump in, in state. I don't know. But I think Oklahoma State is somebody you got to think about there. TCU is somebody you got to think about there. They played for a national title two years ago. Yeah. I'm stuck on my terrible answer, realizing how awful. What was, was your answer? What's your answer? I he said 19. I was like 18. I didn't. I don't think I thought of the question, so that was bad. Uh, TCU though, I mean, TCU is gonna have another rough year this year. I think they have to find a quarterback badly. Like they can't get back till they find the quarterback. You're having trouble getting to the five years part of this, aren't you? <laughs> no, I'm not because no, I'm no, I'm not. <laughs> Why are you hollering? I'm, no. I'm not, I'm five. I'm focused on this year. Yeah. Five years, five years is a long time. I don't want to think about five years down the road. That's the question. Well, I'm focused on 2024. Stop focusing on it. 2029. We're sitting here. I'm older. Casey's got three kids. Nope. Big F's dead. <gasps> and you're here. Why you got to kill big F off? I don't know. I don't know why I killed big F. Why are we doing it. this? <laughs> How are we doing this? I would still think it's Utah unless Kyle Whittingham retired or something. I also Mike Gundy, like he's gonna at some point he's gonna retire at some point. Well, you can't say one guy's gonna retire and the other guy might not. They're about the same age. They've been there the exact same amount of time. I feel for a hypothetical, you can't say, well, that guy's gonna retire, but my guy's not. I feel like <laughs> you're right, but I do feel like maybe Gundy's on on a scale that on a scale of like, you think Gundy feels like he's been there longer? No, I feel like Gundy's a bit closer to Dabo than he is someone who's adapting to the sport. Okay, that's that. I like that. That's my worry is that he's not going getting to, left behind a little bit. Yeah, that's my issue. I thought that they were going to struggle a lot last year, and I was wrong. They end up being a lot better. They just progressively got better as the season went on. But there is an element of me. Uh, kind of doubting if they keep mm -hmm. going in the right direction. You know how how you, you, the the passage of time just slips away from you. Yes, I'm a man. I'm 40. Was how long ago now? Uh, it's like 2007. Nine one season. Yeah, it was. It's like seven, almost 20 years ago now. That's crazy. I'm a, I mean, he's like old now. Well, I mean, it, it just like the time like covid was four years ago like that to me is just wild to think about so i i said this earlier and i know brandon you just mentioned it too like i think that oklahoma state is the safest answer from like a, a brand standpoint because every year it feels like since mike gundy has been there it's like is this oklahoma state's year and somehow they find a way to mess it up usually against oklahoma or texas those two are gone and if you're mike gundy you know and i know he didn't want to play bedlam and you know all the petty stuff there i, I hope eventually bedlam comes back because i think in-state rivalry should always be played but you have to have like a, a, a fr whether he'd ever admit it or not you have to have like a fresh breath of like confidence. If you're Mike Gundy, you're like, I've been in this league forever. Ollie Gordon's coming back. You know, they've got a, they've got a stacked roster and the big brothers are not there. And like, unfortunately that's what Oklahoma was to them was their big brother. So I, I think Oklahoma state's the answer. And also Oklahoma state like has a path to like make the most sense because they've been in that conversation for so long. They just always lose to the two teams that are no longer there. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to just name a team. You say, if they can, if they can be the team that runs this conference in five years, Houston. No, no. I I think there's a world where they could. I let me oh, let yeah. me. I, and I said this before last year. I'm going to say it again here. Obviously, Houston right now is not in great shape. 
They hired a guy. They just went out and hired a guy who had Tulane beating USC in a bowl game two years ago and probably could have gone undefeated last year if his quarterback didn't get hurt. Like, he had Tulane rocking and rolling. That's at Tulane. Now, Houston, to me, was always a team that was a sleeping giant. They're in the fourth or fifth biggest city in this country. They're in a gigantic metro area that is obsessed with football, that you can throw a rock in uh, around the Houston area and hit a four-star football player. You, you just can. So they now are in this big conference. They've got the big city. If, if they have the right coach, Houston could blossom before our eyes in the next five years. Do I think it's going to happen? Do I think it's likely? No. However, we're projecting, right? And if I were projecting stocks right now, I would say, I don't know if I'd buy this one yet, but I would keep an eye on this one because I think they could explode. I do think Willie Fritz is going to be able to like get them more like back on track, but I just did, I'm pulling a lamb right now and I'm stuck in 2024. Have you seen their schedule? Like not only is their big 12 schedule ridiculously hard, they also have to play OU. Like to me, this season is going to be so rough for them that I can't see past that. Like first year head coach, I understand he was great, whatever. But just like the path that they have to even be remotely successful this year is so damn hard that like I just can't see it. See, my college football game brain is just kicking because I, I just said all that about Houston. I'm like, I made a note to myself, do a dynasty with Houston. I think <laughs> I think I think it can go well. I'm circling them as a possible dynasty team. You know what? That's a net, net segment we're gonna do in a minute. Okay. I will top five dynasty huh? I'm gonna say this about this. We'll say what about what easy, you're taking an easy way out to in Houston? You just talked about how easy it is to how easy it's going to be to recruit. In the I'm league. not. Uh, first of all, there's multiple layers of franchise or of dynasties. Okay, there is. You you do one with your favorite team, like I do one with Mississippi State, win a couple of national titles, then I move on. And then you go to like the MAC and you build Akron into a, a big time power. But then sometimes you just want to experience Power Five football from a different lens. I had a, a great one with Stanford one year. I've had a great one before with uh, Miami. And I think I might want to try Houston. Is that is that so wrong? I think recruiting is going to be really easy, but I, I like I like it. You don't like it, or you wouldn't have said anything. Go ahead. It's going. To you be go fun. ahead. Go Cougs. You got this, Brandon. Why are you being cut? All right. Uh, <laughs> Cincinnati. No, no. They, they have the coach stinks. We talked. About it's that. remarkable they hired that coach. Yeah, his playbook. <laughs> bad decision. Big F. Two years ago, this guy was going to get fired at Louisville, and he somehow weaseled out of that and landed in the Cincinnati job, who had just been to the fucking playoff a year before that. Like, how the fuck did he get that job? Yeah, you got. One. They will be. They will be the worst team. Like that was. That's the answer. It's not. It's not Arizona State. It's. It's not Houston. They will be the worst team in the Big Twelve. Cincinnati is awful. Yeah, I hate Satterfield's offensive scheme. The uh, the like it's just so mundane, and the amount of plays and looks they give fit on the napkin. It's so bland. It's so minuscule. Arizona State can they run the Big Twelve? Pro probably not, right? No. no, but Dillingham's a great coach. You think Dillingham's the right guy? Good coach. I think he's the right guy. You think they take a step this year? I don't know. I think maybe next year would be the year. I think this year is going to be too early. Okay. Um. Uh, they have the quarterback. Here's a fascinating one, and you really got to think about this. Can Colorado run this conference in five years? There's a world, right? There is no, a world. There's there. a world. Theon's not there in five, five years. I understand, but there's a world that he is there. There is a world where he's there. And this is a team who's shown before in the, in the history of college football, they can support, they can be a winner. They had the 1990 co-national champs. They had Cordell Stewart, Rashawn Salam in the in the mid 90s. Like this is a team that can get the dudes, and if he stays there, which I don't know if he will or not, hell, hell, I don't know. But could I see him building them up to where they're winning nine or ten games a year if he stays? I think I might. Oh, uh, I think you I, and I understand. Like right now, with you know, it's like Shadour and Travis Hunter and all that. But like there, if he stays, which I do think that he will. Um, like it wouldn't be crazy at all because he's just like this year we'll see exactly like his, you know, his style of bringing guys in through the portal and not really doing much recruiting, which he catches, you know, a lot of heat for if they improve, which I do think that they will, again, they're playing in a worse conference than the PAC 12 was last year. And they win. I mean, what, what, what do you say they win this year? Six games, seven games. Like I know we're not giving our official. Play. I would, I would go, I would go, I put them in that five to seven range. But like that, you know, going from one to four. And I mean, I understand like they're talking a lot of shit, whatever, but like, 
improving every single year, I think he's going to do. And five years, where does that put you at a, in a conference that doesn't have a Texas or an Oklahoma right now? Maybe they will in five years, but they don't. Do you think he can go five and seven this year and, and everybody's happy? No. What about you, Big F? I, I don't know if there's – because he can – he's just been so polarizing and they've talked so much shit. If they go seven and five, which like subjectively would be a great season for them considering projections and everything, people will still hate on them. Yeah. They can win seven games. They still will be like, oh, they – I mean, every game they lose, they will get clowned no matter what happens. So I don't know. If and they could lose every game by like one touchdown. They could lose like very close games. I think at this point, because of how polarizing he's been, and like, you know, we talked about a couple weeks ago, like doing unnecessary things, like the stuff with Twitter, like you just don't need to do that. It just puts like a bigger target on them to where if like they're not winning like 10 games, they're going to get shit talked. And honestly, uh, I, this for the, for the argument of like going in the future, they have I, even the little, the, Say he leaves after this year. Say Shadur leaves, Shiloh leaves, and say he leaves. Yeah, I still feel like there's someone of foundation and just the kind of college or university that Colorado is that they could even potentially do it without him. Like I think there's enough base there that. Potentially- well, I don't. I don't know, Big Ev. I, that's the problem. I don't think he's building a foundation. I, I think he's just going year to year with this thing. I guess. Let me. Let me I guess when I say foundation, you mean resources and I fan mean, base and I, all that. That's what I mean. Like resources. Yeah. I think they have enough there, and there's enough going for them there. With just the, uh, just the university and just the I mean, Boulder and, and the increasing popularity of it, yeah. just the college town. Like I think th- there's a lot there to like outside of just Dion being there. Yeah, I mean they've got a tremendous buy-in out there, right? Like they're everybody's on board. Everybody wants it to work. I think they just you told me before the show they just sold out season tickets for the second year in a row. So like everything's th- yeah, everything's structured fine. It's just a matter of him now. Very quickly, I think that schedule this year is sneaky nasty as fuck. And Blutman brought my attention to this game, but they open at home against North Dakota State. Yeah, that's that's kind of dangerous. Very dangerous. Very. De- they, that's terrifying. They were eight and a half point favorites. Now seven. Yeah, I mean that that's a team that's going to come out. They're going to be physical and they're going to do everything that gave Colorado problems last year. Uh, their second game's at Nebraska, who they're trying to turn it around too. Like, you know, um, they got Colorado State on the road. Um, Wait a minute. Their right. first three games are very difficult. How come they're playing at Colorado State two years in a row? Uh, yeah, no, I thought year. they were at home last yeah, year. In- that was at home? I thought that was at Colorado State. They were wearing black, I remember. Y'all sure? Last year was Colorado. Their sidelines were packed for that game. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, Isn't that the game like Lil Wayne led them out of the tunnel? It was It was, a, it was the most watched game, and it, was, it ended at like 2 in the morning. He's Thursday, it wasn't a Thursday night game? No. Uh, no, it was Saturday. It was- Saturday, it was we crazy went. late. I remember it went so. I, I think it was a Thursday night I think game. It was Friday. Friday. It might have been Friday. 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 Didn't we go live for the ending of that? Yeah, it was. No, 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 no. Yeah, you guys did go live. We did. It was Saturday. Or did you guys go live for the Stanford? Game? I don't think it was Saturday night. I think it was. We went live for the Stanford game. I, I think that was a Thursday or a Friday night. I think it was a Friday. It was a standalone game. It was a fr- no, I'm certain it was a Friday. We went Turn live for. I think we went live for Colorado Stanford later in the season. No, that was on a Saturday, and and Colorado made an uh, Stanford made an incredible comeback. I am I am pretty sure that this. I think we might be getting Friday. bogged down now. <laughs> this, game, this game was on. I fear we're bogged down. I think it's Friday. I fear I'm this locking game in Friday. Was on Friday. Yeah, he's definitely looked it up. By the way, so he, when he says I think it's Friday, I'm locking it in. That's he just. This game was on Saturday. I mean, I'm on camera. You can see I didn't touch it. It was my on phone. Saturday. It was not on Saturday. Was it on Saturday? September sixteenth. Yes, Saturday. I'm telling Shit. you, we went live for that game. It was like one of the, like. But I thought that was a standalone game that was sitting by itself. Nah, last year. It was on Fox. Focus on the next five. Was, yeah. Guys, we're focused on this year and and the four after that. <laughs> anyway, don't worry about that. I'm a thousand percent sure we went live for that. Can 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 BYU? I, I don't think we went live for that, Casey. I think I think you're wrong on that one. I don't think we did. You sure? Yes. I'm not. Nonetheless, this Colorado schedule is tough, even the back end. Some of their home games Brandon, are still very we went live for it because we had to record. On, we always go live on Saturday nights, but we went live in the middle of that game because it lasted until like 2.30 in the morning. That would make sense. I think she's wrong. But I'm, hey. not, I'm not wrong. Hey, that's we're talking Chicago business. Y'all are, in, y'all are in New York. Chicago talk. I think she's wrong. 
So we just decided to not go live on a Saturday night. I think I think it's Saturday because they had Fox Game Day there. I'm telling you, we did. I know we did. And like everyone was like talking shit to me because I was like living and dying. And I remember Jack telling me like he thinks that I'm a bigger Colorado fan than an A&M fan. I remember very vividly. Anyway, um, five years. Can this be BYU's conference? No. No. Okay. All right. That was easy. Can it be Baylor's conference? Baylor's interesting to me. This is a big year for Baylor. It is. Huge you know, year. Re-signing Dave Aranda. And like, I looked up because I was curious, like, do you know how bad they've been since they won the Big 12 in 2021? Really bad. And I thought they were, when he won in his, what, second year, they won the conference. I thought, I thought it was a rocket ship. I thought, my God, I can't believe LSU didn't hire this guy. I can't believe Miami didn't hire this guy. And turns out they might've been right. Yeah. They've gone 10 and 16 since then and re-signing him this year. Or giving like that to me was a very strange decision. Like I, I understand they won the conference, you know, not that long ago, but like you win the conference and then you've been shit since then. Like I, this is huge for him and Baylor, but I just, I don't Baylor to me is never going to really get over that hump either. And I understand it's a new conference now, but I still don't see Baylor being the face of the big 12. Can UCF be the face of the big 12? I think that they're mm-hmm. closer to one than they are to the fine to the last spot. Like, I think that, like I'll, 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 I'll repeat maybe. the question: Can UCF own this conference? Maybe the like potential's I, there, right? Yeah, like I. Would put but the, Gus Malzahn can't own a conference. I. I don't think so. I don't know. I feel like Gus Malzahn is like one of those guys that, like, in retrospect, people were like a lot harder on him when he was constantly going up against Nick Saban. Yeah. Now listen, Auburn objectively was better off when Gus Malzahn was there to what they've had the last three years. There's no doubt about that. There's there's no questioning that. They they would have been fine just writing that out as opposed to what the fuck they did, which is hire a guy who had no ties to the Southeast, and then uh, Hugh Freeze is trying to dig him out, outside of that uh, along with uh, other things that Hugh Freeze is trying to do, no doubt. Um, but UCF and Houston right there with each other. Yeah, so UCF's kind of got the same thing, although it's a little different, right? UCF's not in – they're not in as big a city as Houston, but they are in very fertile recruiting ground. They do have the state to themselves as far as uh, a, a, the conference goes. They're the only one over there. However, if you're UCF, and I guess this is true for, for Houston too, but if you're UCF and you're trying to get kids from Florida to go to Florida, you got to wait till they say no to Florida, Miami, Florida State, Georgia, Alabama, LSU, and then maybe you get that guy that wants to go to UCF. Whereas – I think Houston's uh it's still a, a path, but it's still, it's a shorter path to me than than UCF is. Houston, Houston, is it, though. I mean, Houston's. I mean, do, do you think do you think yeah. being in the SEC hurts hurts Houston recruiting yeah. at all? Even, I, even if it's slightly, it's a similar. It's it's very very similar, right? Like they're they're sucking hind tit in their own state against SEC teams that are in that state. I just think, I guess, I think there's more. I think the Houston area is more fertile than the Orlando area. I think there's more there's more at the buffet table. And maybe that's wrong because Florida is a hell of a state too. It's two of the top three states in football recruiting talent. I mean, uh, Houston, Houston obviously is just like gigantic. So like not everybody can go play at Texas or AM or wherever. The problem is is that it's I mean, it's I think they're very similar because it's like now I do think Texas hurts Houston's recruiting because now it's two teams within yeah. a couple mm-hmm. hours that play in the SEC. Like they're all so close together. Like AM and Houston are an hour apart. AM and Texas are an hour and a half apart. So it's like just even getting the guys to go visit Houston when they could be visiting AM or Texas. Like, if you want to play in the SEC, now you have those two options. Like, that yeah, hurts Houston's recruiting. What UCF has to sell that Houston doesn't is a, a national championship seven years ago. Mm-hmm. Houston doesn't have that, and UCF does. So I also, they say. Because I also think the same way you can say, like, Georgia and all them, like, with Texas, with uh, Houston, like, you could say LSU, you could say Oklahoma. Oh, for sure. Like, you can say Oklahoma State, even like, you can say all these teams as well. In, bordering states and like houston's obviously like they've had good players in the past like that you know that's like an obvious thing but like still to get those players to look at houston and ucf they have to say no to the bigger programs in the state all right you want to do an ad before i get to the rest of these teams oh of course i want to do an ad we do have a good amount of ads so we should get that in we have a new exciting one in brandon the last time i was in chicago i was wearing my bull and branch pjs phenomenal bull and branch is i'm like obsessed with everything they do they sponsored our mother's day special so if you're listening to this and you haven't watched it it's not just for mother's day but bull and branch 
is the best. So they do sheets, they do robes, they do PJs, they do it all. Actually, they do crib sheets, which my son mm. is sleeping like a king on Bowl and Branch. So they're a really cool story. They know exactly where all their cotton comes from. It's like incredibly like they're, they're making sure that you know where it's coming from and it's completely free from toxins, which I know as a mom now, I actually pay attention to that stuff way more. You don't want to be sleeping on toxins. It's actually like very bad for you. Bowling Branch does it and they're very affordable. So it's luxury sheets. That's also affordable, which I happen to love, Ev, when you're sleeping in luxury, but you don't break the bank. So Bowen Branch is incredibly soft. I live in their PJ shorts right now. They are so great. So sleep better with the softest, most breathable bedding from Bowen Branch. Get 20% off your first set of sheets plus free shipping when you use the promo code ROUGH at bowlandbranch.com. That's bowlandbranch, B-O-L-L-A-N-D, branch.com. Use the promo code ROUGH. And I'm telling you guys right now, it's a great gift great gift for anybody. And if you're a dude out there listening, I, I was telling the Bull and Branch girls when I, when I met with them, girls want to sleep on nice sheets. So if you're thinking about bringing a lady home or bringing a guy home, whatever you want, good sheets, get Bull and Branch. You don't need the shitty sheets, get Bull and Branch. It's important. Bull and Branch. Um, can Texas Tech run this conference? And I have a little aside to talk about Texas Tech. Big Av, can Texas Tech run this conference? <sighs> um, I've got to say no. Yeah, I want to say yes because I do like Joe McGuire, but I want to say I'm. I think I have to say no. Unfortunately, I don't think there's a fan base in this country that loves and has a more irrational confidence in their guy than Texas Tech fans have in Joe McGuire. When you talk, when you rank coaches, when you we have an echo. I don't you think echo. y'all don't hear it? Okay, good. I'm hearing it. When you talk. Or rank college football coaches, Texas Tech fans are gonna sit up and say, What about Joe McGuire? What about Joe McGuire? What about Joe McGuire? Um, show it to me. He's going to his third year, right? Show it to me. Is this a 10 win team waiting to happen? Is this an 11 win team waiting to happen? I certainly don't see it. Uh, when is the Joey McGuire hype gonna live up to the Joey McGuire or when is the Joey McGuire reality gonna live up to the Joey McGuire hype of Texas Tech fans? Brandon. I have to tell you this, and I know you talked about it with Miami a couple weeks ago. I don't know what it is about Joey McGuire, but I'm drinking that Kool-Aid. I think in our, our prediction last year, I said he was going to be the Big 12 coach of the year. I was obviously very wrong. But at, like when I was looking at the Big 12 teams, and I looked and I was like, Joey McGuire, I'm buying in, and I don't know what it is because he hasn't shown me anything at Texas Tech, but for some reason, like I am buying that hype for them, and they are another team that is going to massively benefit from the two teams going to the SEC because Texas Tech – like has always had to play that second fiddle to Texas. Now they don't have to. Damn it. Fuck. Uh, uh, Blutman Blut just called dibs on the Texas Tech dynasty. Ah. Uh, uh, mm. See, I, 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 the uniforms I think, and everything. And Hopefully they got the tortilla toss in the game. That'd be sick. Fuck Fish, yeah. yeah. Tortilla tosses are awesome. Lubbock is also just like, there's nothing out there. There's nothing to do. But if you go to Texas Tech, like all you care about is your football team. Like that yeah. is like, to me, it's like prime to be like the, and they've obviously been very good in the past too. So like, to me, it's like they're prime to take big 12 as their own conference. You know, I, I think the, uh, I feel like the Joe McGuire hype is really just because his first year, everyone thought they were going to be God awful and yeah. they weren't God awful. And I think he, I feel like he's kind of living off that a little bit, which I'm also partly said I like Joe McGuire, but I feel like that's where it stems from. But are you buying in again? Like, are you like looking at him being like, oh, he could do it this year? I like, I mean, I like more. And then Taj Brooks is very running back is very, very good. But I just, I think they're going to kind of be what they've been like. They're going to maybe win like six, like seven games, which isn't bad, but I don't I think know. That's I'm kinda, I think that's kind of where they're at six, seven games. They have a lot to figure out on the defensive side of the ball, but I mean, I'm a big Baron Morton guy. Like I just, I love his uh, play style, the the fearless gunslinging thing. And you talk about Tosh Brooks. How about they have four really good wide receivers? Yep. One of them I'm going to talk about later. <laughs> How much time do you think we got at the end of the show? All right. Uh, let's see. Um, can the Kansas Jayhawks run this conference? A sentence I never mm. thought I would say. Yes, I believe the Kansas Jayhawks could run this conference. I do. I think 
I think they, they they're the t- kind of program that could go ten wins, eleven wins, once or twice. I don't think they can run the conference year to year, but I think they got the right coach. I think they have a top ten coach. Explain why you think they could. Well, right. I mean, Lance Leipold, and like I think you know if we're doing the five years thing right now, and we've seen how good they've been. Like if I assume he's going to be there in five years and like what he's been building, I, 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 it's crazy to think, but like it used to, I mean, it wasn't that long ago that if like a team lost to Kansas, we were making fun of them. And then last year, how many times we talk about how much fun it is to watch Kansas football. So why couldn't they be the face as long as he stays there and winning with all these injuries? Right. I mean, if they could, if they could string together a year with Jalen Daniels being healthy for the full season, they're Mm -hmm. dangerous. They're the most confident I felt about a team that you've listed so far that they could do it. Iowa State. Yes. I don't I say I, yes. I don't know what happened to Matt Campbell. I think they could be very good this year though, and he puts it back together. You do? Yeah. I, I, I kind of their defense is great. I mean, a quarterback just with the first name Rocco is excellent. Yeah. I don't know. We haven't mentioned that yet. Brock, I mean, just Rocco is an awesome it, name. It's a great football name. But, but here's that he has the vi- the opposite for me that with Joey McGuire. And like because he was so he was talked about every single time a job open. It was Matt Campbell's job. I mean, we were talking about the Dallas Cowboys potentially hiring Matt Campbell. And because it fell flat so fast. Like I, I guess, and maybe this just makes me a hater. I would need to see him actually have a good season again for me to buy in on them being the face of the Big Twelve. Can the Arizona Wildcats run this conference? I don't think so. I think no. once no, I think it might be a struggle. Now. Yes, I think they'd have to do it now. I think that there's going to be a drop off after Fafita and McMillan leave, and I don't think Brent Brennan was the hire. I, if Jed Fish was there today, I would tell you right now, yes, yes, yes. But he's not there. Also, they're broke. Yeah, well, I think everybody acts like they're broke, and they're not really. I think people, are, I think schools are lying about being broke. But they're like legitimately broke. The aren't they? Aren't the, this college itself is in crazy debt? So are UCLA and Cal. Why would you say it with such confidence and gusto? Yeah, he was excited about that. That's how, that's how we do it out on the West Coast. Yeah, fuck yeah. It, we're broke. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? Maybe if you spent less time protesting and more time practicing football, you would be broke. That's again, sick. the visual of these two at like again. in his sunglasses and Stevie, Liam shrugging. And- Stevie Walker. <laughs> um, Let's see. Can TCU? Do we already yeah. get TCU? Yeah, we did. I, I did Oklahoma State. I did TCU. Here is the most fascinating one to me. Because I think this answer is yes. But ever since they joined the Big 12, they've been a disappointment. And that's the West Virginia Mountaineers. Hmm. Everybody pull up a chair. I'm about to tell you about growing up when West Virginia was a swinging bag of chainsaws. All right? These motherfuckers back in the late 80s, the early 90s, and then the Pat White era. This is a team that has been close to winning national championships before in the fucking Big East. This is a team that has a history of producing players, NFL Hall of Famers, that rivals a bunch of huge schools. I mean, if you look at the, if you really look at the list of players that have come from West Virginia, it is a fucking crazy list. And they've been going through it lately. And last year coming in, we thought they were going to fire the coach. And what happened? They had a pretty good damn year. I think West Virginia could run this conference if they get the right leadership and the right guy. And how much fun it is when they're good. Like I like th- their whole vibe. And I know we talked about this on the show a million times, but like just doing that show when we went in what 2019, like just titties. But yeah, Brandon got to see some titties. Oh, yeah. Um, you you saw him too. You were in the crowd oh, next yeah. to him. But like just like that is such a fun, like I I would never want to like be stuck there all the time, but like a fun college town to be. And like, if their team is good, it's awesome. Like for me, it is one of those, like it's awesome for the sport when West Virginia is good because they're cr- so fucking crazy. Wait, Wait big up, I haven't had this conversation with you since you've been on the show. You like titties? I'm a fan. Dude, me too. <laughs> they're, I mean, they're just awesome. Yeah, they really what, are. I mean, what, what's not to like? Yeah, so I think West Virginia and Texas Tech, when they're both good, it's just so good for Just ball, sport. brother. Just ball. Just ball. Just ball, ball. brother. No time. No, I feel like I'm like, like – Just ball. West Virginia and Texas Tech, both really good. That's going to be your first shirt. Your first shirt at Barstool Sports. Just ball. Turtle cake. You had a turtle cake shirt? How many did we sell? Three? I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Just ball. Just ball has potential. Just ball is very funny. 
You're welcome. Just ball, brother. Fist bump. Uh, uh not, no. not brother, because that's that guy. Um, uh, West Virginia you're... brother. <laughs> y'all, y'all seen this motherfucker? Y'all, y'all know who I'm talking about? I'm a fan. Yeah. I like, <laughs> you like, I like, I like What's up, brother? Sure. He is a funny guy. I think he has yeah. Mississippi State ties. He, really? he, went, he went there for a year. Uh, he did. Uh, Utah, I think we all started with them. And, and the last question is, can Kansas State run this conference? And I think that's an emphatic yes. Right? Yes. yes, absolutely. As long as Kleiman doesn't get poached. You know, you say that. But they Snyder built him up, had him in the national title contention, and had him good forever. And then there was a little period at the end where it kind of got squirrely. But then they hired Kleiman. They've done it with two guys now. I I think they might just be a good program. I I agree with you. I do. I, and, like, Kleiman I don't think is going anywhere either. Yeah, I think he's the kind of guy that's going to stick. And Leibold's the same way. I, I think both those guys are just there for a while. And then, like, again, playing this, like, little game of five years. Like, in five years, imagine if both those guys are still there. Like, the fact that, like, Kansas, Kansas State, like, the, the mm. we'd be talking about, like, that rivalry potentially being to, like, lead the Big 12. That's crazy. I mean, to me, if Dynasty. I know I, I answered the question, Utah, I think, to me, Kansas State is the clear, like, next choice. Yeah. Even like, above Oklahoma State, which I think is a fair, like they'd probably be three. Brandon just claimed, I think Kansas is a dynasty. Love that. No, oh, no, I, 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 I claim somebody else. Kansas State. Oh, you claim somebody? somebody? Okay. I just claim SMU. Mm. And I don't know why that came to my mind, mind, but I was like, I better claim them right now. Well, ACC SMU. Yeah, there's the ACC shows later, but you want to talk about a team with potential. Yeah, they've it's been just, they've been dying to get in a power conference. Dying. Dying. I don't think dying. any any college on planet Earth has been dying to get a power conference. And they, <laughs> they don't, don't give a fuck which one it is either. No, uh, they don't care. We all make fun of like Cal and Stanford being the ACC and, and SMU being the ACC. It doesn't make sense. They, they don't, don't give a fuck. fuck. <laughs> that one doesn't make sense. What? What makes sense about That'd them? Be fun. They're not even in the conference. That's why it'd be fun. Washington State. Washington right. State as a dynasty, Liam. Yeah, I, I, I'm kind of just going down the Mike Leach route there. I mean, let me let me play Mississippi State. <laughs> that would be a real quick move. Um, all right, that's the Big Twelve. That's enough conversation about them. Anybody have anything to add? No, I, I'm excited to do our official predictions. I know we usually do that in like July or early August. Yeah, it's going to be very like just talking through the conference and like the fact that like I think we all think Utah could win it. Like it's just so bizarre to me that everything changed the way that it has in the Big Twelve. I don't think from a product nationally it's going to be great football, but in the conference it's going to be great football. Does so, Big Ev, I, I think when we're We'll do, do this, this in July, like she just said. We'll pick out the best team, the worst team, the surprise team, stuff like that. The best team conversation, I believe, is Utah, Kansas State, Kansas, and Arizona. Yeah, I would even put Arizona ahead of Kansas, but yes, I would agree. And with an outside – oh, I didn't say Oklahoma State, did I? No. And with an outside shot of West Virginia. Like, it's wide open is what I'm trying to say. Right, well, it's, like, it's what I – going back to, it's like – whose conference is it? Because, you know, even with like Nick Saban being gone and like, obviously there's Georgia, but like you just, there's no team that you can even make an argument that it is their conference. That's why Oklahoma state feels like the easiest thing to me, just with like Mike Gundy, but it's yeah. completely wide open. And I know TCU went to a national championship a few years ago, but still like, I wouldn't say it's their conference. Also, I think look, just kind of when I was doing research for the show, this, I think this is a sneaky, very good quarterback conference. There's some talent. We there. know if Afita is like top five. All right, you're you're talking Noah Afita. You're talking Shadur Sanders. You're talking Cam Rising. Uh, yeah. how, about, how about a Daquan Finn and going to Baylor? Yes, thank you. Really Avery good. Johnson. How about Avery Johnson? That's what I'm saying. How about even Garrett Green? I think is pretty good. Yeah. Jalen no. Daniels. Jalen Daniels. Jane, of course. I mean, Morton. Morton, I think is very good as well. There's some. Damn good oh, quarterbacks damn. in this conference. Yeah, that's a good point. There are. Yeah, I think you could watch if you. If you lived in a world that had a bubble over the Big 12 and that's all you could watch, I think you'd be very satisfied watching this league this year. Absolutely. I'm say something that I don't agree with, but I've seen it. So I have time, to time. Time. I'm going to say something that I don't agree with. It's not my take. It, Go. It drafts people trying to be like 
Houston quarterback Donovan Smith first, first round. round. Ain't, Ain't no way. But he's, but he's a good college quarterback. Ain't no way I agree with him being a first round. Uh, I'm going to need that full ain't no way list from you later. Yeah, I like oh, that. Ain't no way list. That, that, that had a little come on man to it. Yeah. yeah. Ain't no way. Ain't no, yeah. way. no way. Ain't no way. Uh, Brandon, you know what? Ain't no way. Ain't no way our data getting stolen online because we're friends with Incogni now. Ain't no way people are getting my information. Uh, data brokers collect personal information. It's crazy in the streets right now. Like you, you can get your information stolen so easily. And all they really need is like your name and your date of birth and other things that they can like encrypt. And it's, it's gone and it sucks. I know Brandon, you've had it happen to you. I've had it happen to me. Getting your bank information or uh, God forbid your identity stolen is completely probably one of the worst things ever. If I have to admit that. So if you do it manually, it takes th over 300 hours to protect all your information, but Incogni can do it all for you automatically. And not only does it remove your data, it also helps like future protection as well. So it's like, it's constantly having you covered. And in this day and age of people can get your shit so quickly. So Incogni takes care of it. Use code rough at incogni.com slash rough. And you get 60% off an annual Incogni plan. That's oh I N C O G N I.com slash rough. And it, it just removes all your personal information from everything that you don't want it on there and keeps it for where you do want it using Cogni and protect yourself because that's what we need to do out there. The streets are not, ain't no way they're getting my information, Brandon. Ain't no way. Let me tell you something. Walker and Blutman might be unstoppable. I don't, I don't like this. Shut up. Just shut up. Like the shades. Uh, we're just going to pray that the, the audio, audio issues we hear terrible. will not come across to everybody else because y'all don't hear the echoes we hear, right? I don't hear no, anything. Not at all. Okay, good. Okay. So, I gotta take him off. I gotta take him off. I looked it, it, up from reading so, that. I, I, both too dark. I, I, uh, I, I watched the process happen. It was, yeah. I watched. Was it unfold. stunning? I, I watched. I watched Blutman be very against putting them on as Brendan viscerally so. encouraged them. Please put them on. Please put them on. I watched. <laughs> I watched, watched Blutman reluctantly put them on. And then instantly take them off. Yes. He hated it so much. I just not a glasses guy is what it is. Um, before we get out of here, uh, how many? You got any more ads? Casey? Yes, we do. We have one more. Okay. So uh, a little Dabo talk, doing an ad. Blutman will get us out of here. Um, so Dabo this week said a lot of things about the transfer portal because he's been under fire uh, for not taking transfers, for not believing in the transfer portal, for not really accessing it the way other coaches have done. And I've long talked about the cult of Clemson and the cult of Dabo and how I don't really like him. I think he's a bullshit artist. I just want to kind of – he's the one guy who's just standing behind what he says, right? Like, whether he's right or wrong, he's not bullshitting about this. And I think he's the biggest bullshit guy we've had in college football the last 20 years. But as far as this goes, he's sticking to his guns and his words. And last week he said things like uh, – you know, we we use the transfer portal all the time. We get transfers from high school. That's just funny. Like he's leaning into it now, and he's saying, "Kind of fuck you guys. I'm going to do it my way." I am I all based in respecting him for this, Big F? I mean, as as the kids say, standing on business. Yeah. I mean, I I guess I mean, listen, he's in a spot where his job's safe. Like I don't yeah. know, even even if he if he goes nine and three the next five years, let's say, he, you think he gets fired? I think Clemson fans will will try to, but it won't work because I think Clemson uh, administration is too smart to do it. Yeah, because I think they know it's it's the it's the age old question when you have a coach in the spot where he's won, it starts to loot, like not win quite as much. Who are you going to get that's better? Well, that's you, don't, you don't like yeah. Dabo, even if you think he's a weirdo, he's cult, blah blah blah. He's a bullshit artist. Who? What coach are you going to hire? Out there on the market, that's better than Dabo Sweeney. That's why when we talked, I don't about think it, you are, especially to Clemson. No, we talked about it last week too with like top five. Like, would you put Dabo? Like, where would you put him as a top coach? I mean, he's. I mean, I think he's like top. I mean, I like. How could you even say anything outside the top like seven? And I think. I, th I think that's even like loose. I. I, I think that's he, loose. I, I think that's like easy. You have to put him in the top five when you win not one but two national titles at a place like Clemson, you should be safe forever. I don't care unless they start like losing, like if they go over, you cannot fire this man. Like you, he, he should be safe forever. I understand Clemson fans got all upset. By the way, I did put this in the group. We did, we forgot Mac Brown last year or last week. Yeah, we, yeah, we did. Uh, national titles. Uh, no, shout no, out no, Gabe no. Eichert for telling me that. Um, 
Dabo, I see, I don't think he's a bullshit artist. And I know you do. And I know we've gone back and forth with this, Brandon. Like, I, I think that Dabo is just who he is. I think the players, I, they seem to completely buy into it. He's weird. You know, he, uh, he's very religious. Like, whatever you want to say. But, like, I don't think that he's full of shit. Like, I think that this is just who this man is. And he's saying, hey, I'm not going to go to the transfer portal. I don't want to do this. And then he says something funny because that's just who this man is. Whether you like it or not, I don't think that he's being a bullshit artist. Well, man, do they still have Moffat? Uh, Ryan back? Yeah. yeah. He's so much better than Shipley. I feel, uh, yeah. I've, I, what? What? what is, I'm thinking like, like they could hit the portal and just got to try a better Ryan back. back. I like him. Hey, uh, three shows, three J mentions. Send J off some money. Pay hey, out some What the hell are you talking about? What are you talking about, Liam? Really? Are you having a stroke? No, <laughs> no I'm, I'm saying like. like I would, I would use the transfer portal to get a better running back. I just would. I would. Well, I think he plays as a running back, and I, I believe in him too. I tell you, the audio is messing with my brain. Yeah, yeah it really is. is. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, we're in an oven. Secondly, the audio doesn't work. There's a headache brewing right now. If there's a headache stirring for me too. All right, we got to get out of here soon. Uh, Casey, read the final ad, and then, and then it's the Blutman Minute. Yeah, the Blutman Minute, which I feel like, you know, after afterwards I might not need as much therapy because the Blutman Minute is so therapeutic. But if I do, I know where to go. BetterHelp, this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. It's okay to not be okay, Brandon, and we know this. It's been, I, I've talked about therapy on the show for a very long time. I love BetterHelp because I, whenever I started using it, I was able to match with a therapist. It didn't actually work out with that one. They were able to find me a new one, which is always like a hard process. A lot of people quit going to therapy because they don't want to have to go out and find a new therapist. BetterHelp not only does that for you, you can also call, text, video calls. You don't have to go sit into an office and it's much more affordable than traditional regular therapy. So if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. And I've said this too, whether you're actually dealing with mental health issues or you just need somebody to talk to. Everybody needs somebody to talk to, kind of help you make decisions, your thought process, your everyday life. BetterHelp can do that. Um, and it, you can do it right from your phone. You don't even have to go anywhere. You can text your therapist at any given time. So get it off your chest with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash smith today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash smith. When you keep things bottled up, it starts to affect us negatively. We know this. We are, we, everyone in this company needs therapy. We all love BetterHelp and BetterHelp loves us. Go to betterhelp.com slash smith. Ladies and gentlemen, gather around you're going to the church of Liam Blutman for the next 60 to 500 seconds. <laughs> Liam Blutman owns the mic. Ladies and gentlemen, the Liam Blutman Minute. Hello, folks. Let's get high. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, so I wrote a lot of, like, notes and stuff for Big 12 stuff and the tank I get through everything and whatever. We're turning Turn some of them into the land. Can I give you some advice right now? To go into, I'm going no, into no, 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 no. Here's what you need to do during this segment. Because it's going to fuck with you. Take the headphones off and just talk. That way you don't hear your echo. This could be a great call from Brandon Walker. I know what I'm doing. You are. Go. All right. So we talked about Texas Tech briefly earlier. Kind of at the receiver room. How about Micah Hudson coming in? Five-star recruit at receiver, Brandon. He's smooth with it. A savvy route runner. An alpha WR1 who could win over the top in addition to carbon defenses over the middle. Micah Hudson might not be a name that folks know right now. Wait a few months. Wait a few years. This kid's going to the NFL. And he's going to tear it up in his true freshman season, sophomore season, junior season. What's he going to do, Brandon? Pub numbies. Numbies. Micah, Micah Hudson, Hudson and post numbies. numbies. One of the best soon to be receivers in the country resides in Lubbock, Texas. Um, what else was there? Cam Cook running back at TCU. They need a workhorse RB1 badly, and they need a different kicker on offense. Uh, Sonny Dice and staff are raving about Cam Cook during the spring right now. Dykes was big on him in the summer of last year. Now is his time. He's nicknamed the chef. Great nickname for a running back. Cam Cook. Well, that's that's great. That's a, that's a great nickname. He's uh, 
He got, got really good footwork, loves the thing, thing. with the shifty shift size, size. Not, not afraid to initiate contact. He's, 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 he's not very hard, hard, so I'm looking forward to seeing him playing. playing. And we talked about how they've, they've got, got a lot of them. They need to find a TJ Tampa replacement. John, John Williams, Williams, cornerback. He started just games in 2023. He's really, really good when he is on the field. He's a confident corner. Matt Campbell and his staff are super excited about him. 11, extremely good ball skills. And he's got hunger for being on an island, stranding the balls there in one on one uh, matchup. And uh, superb athlete, evidenced by playing corner, quarterback, running back, receiver in high school, close track and field and basketball. John Tez Williams. Butman, man. Ladies and gentlemen, I think what we just saw was Liam Butman unveiling three new Butman guys. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, Liam. Yeah. Liam got sorry, my bad. All right, All right Casey. Um, he and I have been in a torture chamber of bad audio and, and 79 degrees in this room. I want to physically harm someone. So we <laughs> need to end the show as soon as we can. Yeah, no, it's it we, we have fine audio, but it is an oven in here too. I am dying. I, I never, never will see any, any of you motherfuckers again, and I might not come back to work tomorrow. Um, good, good show, Big F. Thanks, Brandon. Get fucked. Good show, Casey. <laughs> Thanks, Brandon. Good show, Brandon. That's unnecessary. <laughs>